Hello and welcome to what will be a three-part series on making an AR-based quiz game using Unity. Now if you don't want to make it AR, you can still follow on with this first part, it will still show how we can set up a basic question answer section. Okay, if we have a quick look at, at how sort of a lot of these quiz shows work, we can see they've got a question box with a few answers, look down, we're using a very similar kind of template, no matter where we sort of look. It's just the sort of the look and feel after that. So we're going to go for this kind of structure. So I'm currently in Unity 6. Um, if you're not sure how to set up Unity 6 project, then please go and check out my previous video, link below. And if you're using the Unity 2022 version, you can go and watch one of my early videos, also link below in how to step in 2022. So I've already got a basic scene. I've got my AR session, I've got my XR origin. Again, if you're not making an AR quiz, just simple quiz, then don't worry about these settings. So having just looked at the, uh, the Google images, I'm going to create a quick UI. So this first part will just be looking at making a simple quiz with a simple canvas. Um, where's canvas come? There we go. Um, so nothing particularly looking pretty at the moment, just getting the basic functionality. So I'll just sort of bring that to the front view. Um, I'm going to now right click UI. I'm going to have a text box and this is where our first question is going to go. Yep, I want to import TMP essentials. Going to bring this up to top, so that's where our question box is going to go. Uh, I'll just make that a little bit bigger. I might want to change these a little bit if the if the questions get too big. Uh, I'll just rename that question. I'm now going to have buttons for the actual questions so that they can be clickable. So if I just go right click again, UI uh, button. I'm going to move that up a little bit, and again, this is where our answers are going to go. So I'll just move that one side. I'll just bring it over a little bit, let's make it a little bit wider, a little bit deeper, probably a bit too big there, but we'll see. Depends on the size of your window of course. So what I'm going to do is click on canvas before I go any further, I'm just going to say screen, no I'll leave that as overlay, I'm going to go down to, to scale with screen size, there we go, that's what I was looking for. So I'll move the question up again, stretch that out a little bit, grab the button, Sometimes it does take a while just, just faffing with, with these sizes. Uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. That'll do. Um, so now I've got one working, I'm going to duplicate. Let's move that over and duplicate again. I'm not going to do anything too pretty at the moment. We can tie this up a little bit later once it's functional. So we've got where our question box is going to go. The four buttons are going to be the answers, and then we have an extra button um, that's going to be where we can get the result. Is it correct? Is it not correct? So uh, I'm trying to duplicate that one more time. And this is going to be a button where it will give us our results and our score, and also allow us to go on to the next question. So let's just stretch that out. Okay, I'm just going to quickly lock these to the top center so that if I move the screen around, this should stay yeah, close to that top side, so that'll do for now. Okay, so I'm going to quickly rename these as well, so that's going to be our question A, sorry, answer A, B, I'm going to do a bit clumsy with my clicking. You don't need to rename them, it just makes it a bit easier to see what we're doing in a little while, and that's going to be our next button. Okay. So now we've got our basic UI set up. So our next step is to create a script that's going to handle all these questions. So create uh, scripting, and I want, I'm going to stick with mono behavior. I know the new version unit is moving over to different kinds of scripting methods, but we'll just stick with what's familiar for the moment. It's down there, and I'm just going to call this quiz stuff. And we'll wait for this to load up in Visual Studio. Okay, so now in Visual Studio, I'm going to need a couple of libraries. So the first couple of things I'm going to need is we've got the Unity Engine. Um, what I've noticed in this new version of Unity is it's not including the, some of the standard libraries that I normally use. So I'm going to use the Unity Engine.ui. Uh, I'm also going to be using TM Pro to access the text boxes. Uh, I'm also going to want one other library, uh, which is just the Systems Generic, and this will give us all the tools we need. For getting this kind of done. Okay, so obviously we know when we, we're doing a quiz, 
we've got a question, we've got multiple choice answers, and I want some way of, of controlling that. Now I could create arrays of strings, but what I'm actually going to do is create a very quick class. So again, this is a this is in like many of my videos, this is a crude method. I should create a separate uh, class file, but I'm not. I'm just going to put it down here. So I'm coming to the end of our quiz stuff class, pressing enter, and pasting in my new class that I've already previously written. So I've got a public class, quiz questions. So I've got a public string Q for question, and then answers A, B, C, and D. Then finally, which one of these is the correct answer? So I'm using this class as a data structure. I could use a dictionary, um, but I've chosen to go this method for something I'll just demonstrate in a moment. So if I just save that, make sure it's compiling in the background. Um, now I want a list of questions. Now I want a list because then I can have either no questions or of course many questions. Um, so I'm going to create that right now. Again, save me typing it out in front of you. Just copy and paste in from previous project. So there we go. I've got a public list of quiz questions. Questions equals new list quiz questions. So that creates me a new list that I can now add to. Now if I press save um, and I come back to Unity, what I would traditionally expect to see is this available in the inspector. Back in Unity, I'm going to just very quickly create an empty. That's going to be our quiz control. I'm going to add the script we've just made to that. So if I just grab the script and drag it on. So we can see it's not there. It's a public variable, but it's not there. I need to do one more thing to make this work, which is I need to make it serializable. So if I just come across here, type this in. This is now going to say the class is serializable. Therefore, I can now see it or should be able to see it over in the inspector. There we go, we can now see we've got questions, list is empty, we can, we can now start to add our questions and answers in the inspector itself. Now if I was doing this on a more professional level, I would hook this up to probably some database of some description that would load the files in and maybe they will come to that in another video. And if you're interested in hooking up into a database, leave me a comment below and I shall look into a tutorial on that. Okay. So if we go back into Visual Studio, back into our code, so we've now got the list. I'm going to want a few other things as well, and that is I need to get those text boxes and buttons from our UI because I need to be able to talk to these directly. So again, I'm just going to make those uh, public. So I've got our text box question, our text, I want the text from the buttons itself so I can change the button text. And I've also got the button that is our next button because I want to be able to sort of control this as well. A couple more things I really want, and that is our current question. Which question are we currently pointing to? Because we're going to have a list of questions, and I want to point to zero, which of course is the first element on the list. Okay, so I'm now going to create another little function, a function called update question. Um, so I'm going to ignore this update. It's not going to do anything for us right now. I've got an update question. So this is going to grab the question dot text the text box on the Unity UI, and it's going to copy whatever our first question is. So a current question, which of course we've just said is zero, so whatever is our first question, it's going to copy the question itself into that text box, then the answers, the answers into those text boxes, A, B, C, or D. Um, and we'll see that working in just a moment. So in start, I'm just going to do one thing, which is, in start, I'm going to say update question. So when the program starts, it's going to immediately display our first question. And I'm also going to say the next button is false, meaning we can't click it yet. We can't go to the next thing. So I'll just save that. Okay, so that's compiled. I'm going to just click on our quiz control. We can now see we've got our various things going off up here. So I'm going to start by dragging the question over onto our question so it knows that's the text box to talk to. I'm going to just um, expand this. So we can see our button text. Well, I've got four buttons that I want to change the data. Well, actually, five. So I'm just going to press plus, 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 plus. There we go. There's our five buttons. I'm going to expand these because it's the text that I want to work with. So I'm going to drag the text over. It's really important to get these right. So I'm going to put A into slot zero, B into slot one, C into slot two, D into slot three. So that's our questions A, B, C, and D. And finally, our next button, which is where we're going to put whether they got the answer right or not. But I also want the button itself. So I'm just going to collapse those back in themselves so I don't get confused. Uh, I'm now going to drag the next button itself. So it's not the text box now, but the actual button. Okay, so we've now got this kind of working. 
I hope. Um, but we've got no questions. If I was to run this now, it would crash because there's no questions to actually put into the program. So let's now add a few questions in. Okay, so I've got three questions in. Obviously I could keep on going, I could add a few more questions. And like I say, it would be good to really uh, load these from a text file or from a database, but this will do for now for getting this whole thing working. So I'll jump back over into the code. Um, so now this should actually work, so I'm going to actually go and give it a quick whirl, see if it does. There we go, we can see it's got what was the first arcade game, and we can click on these. So we can see we can't click on the button just yet, um, but I should be able to click on these. Yep, they're clickable, uh, but it doesn't really know what to do with these answers just yet. That's, that's good. So back in the code, I'm just going to write end of main of, of quiz class, so we don't get confused and start putting code in the wrong place. So what we've got, we've obviously now got our current question, our text boxes, we've got our startup, we're going to ignore update for the moment. What I'm going to do though is, is now create a clickable. So what I want is a if we click on an answer, so this is going to be a public, uh, so that we can see it from Unity itself, public void, um, what am I going to call this, answer, click. But what I'm also going to want to do is I want to receive which which click did they do because I want to use this one function for every single question. So I'm going to create the string. Now I would have preferred char, uh, but it's not letting me use char in the inspector from Unity itself. So I'm just going to go with string answer. And at this point, I can just sort of again I'm going to grab a quick bit of code from what I've already tested. So I've got if answer zero. So basically, if the very first letter that we've put into our quiz. Um, so basically it's letter A, if it equals our questions answer, then yeah, you've got it right, we're going to add 10 points to score, and we're going to write, that's correct, with your how many points you've got. And um, because I've said plus equals, it means you'll get 10 points for each question you get right, and it will increment it by 10. So if, if, we, if it is the right answer, and they match, great. Please note there's no validation, so if we mess something up in Unity in the inspector, it's going to break this code. That's something for you to do later. Um, of course, if they get it wrong, I'm just going to say that is incorrect and still display the score, which of course, if it's the first question, means zero. Now, at the very end of this bit, we can now go to the next question and we can also make the text box, sorry, the button clickable. So, current question plus plus, go to next question. So, it's going to go from question one to question two. Then, it's going to make the button actually clickable so we can now go to the next question. Uh, at that point, we want to, um, yeah, that's fine, yep, that's that's it for that part. So now we want one more function, it's just like the last one though, public void uh, next click. Next click. This time we don't need any parameters for this one, it means this button's been clicked, we've pressed that button, what do we want to do next? We want to say update question, so let's go to the next question, which means it will now call this, and because we've added one to it, it'll be the next question. And also we want to make this button false again. Uh, we, we want so they can't accidentally click it twice and keep on going. So if I just say equals false, and there we go. This should be pretty much it. So let's, let's just save that. Okay, it's now compiled. So what I'm going to do is click on A, B, C, and D simultaneously. I'm going to come down to our button. It says on click, on click is empty. Well, we just made an on click fun function. So I'm going to add that to the list. I'm going to drag, so I'm not dragging the script, I'm dragging our quiz controller over. Should have still got all A, B, C, D clicked, good. I'll click on no function, quiz stuff, and this is where I can say answer click. Couldn't find it for a moment there. Um, answer click. So we can see it's expecting a letter now. I'm going to have to click each one individually, so I shall just come off these, click on A, and of course we're going to send it letter A. So when I said earlier I'm not validating, if I was to type a full word in, it would still only look at the very first letter. Um, so again, there's no validation. So if I left that blank, I've not validated it, so it would potentially crash, because this wouldn't receive any parameter. So it's important that we do get this right. So I'm just gonna put A, obviously click on B. It is case sensitive as well, so watch your coding. Uh, C, 
and finally D. So that's our now A, B, C, D sorted. So if I press play, this should work for the first part. What was the first arcade game? Pong. Correct. 10 points. Excellent. Now I've not hooked up the next button yet, so it doesn't know what to do. But that's easy enough now. We click on next. We can come down to on click again. We drag the same quiz controller over. Click on no function. Quiz stuff. Next click. So now again, we'll go and test this. Okay, so if I just press, what was the first arcade game? Pong, correct, 10 points, excellent, go me. And now if I press this button for next, there we go, we've got the next question. Um, so if what, what game was it? Let's say I go it wrong, that is incorrect, I've still got 10 points. Next question, what was Pac-Man's original name? Correct, 20 points. Okay, so that wraps up part one of making our AR quiz. So we've got a very basic quiz thing working. What I'd recommend is go and watch my other video, linked now, and look at how you can improve the UI itself by changing colors, using images. It's actually put a message on this box that tells the person they have to click to get the next question. Add some extra questions in there, ready for other topics. In part two, we'll be looking at using AR to trigger what topic of questions you actually want to show the user. I think this would be fantastic in sort of visitor museums um, to give them the questions on the place they've been looking at. And in part three, we'll look at tidying it up and we'll actually look at improving the UI and we'll look at um, how we can put some validation in to make it a little bit more secure. So if you found this useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next video.